McHale who gets the catch. He's got patrol. This is Halloween, but tonight we are treating frights for spikes. It's the Section 4 3A Volleyball Final, and for the third straight year, the Stillwater Ponies and North St. Paul Paulers battle it out for a state tournament slot and a trip to the XL Energy Center next week. I'm Mike Beaton, all by myself, talking to myself. Here I am, but that's all right. We've got plenty of friends, as you can see, in the bleachers among us. This has become quite the rivalry over the last several years. As we noted, the third straight year, North St. Paul and Stillwater have met in the section final. Stillwater winning the prior two meetings in 2017. They won in four sets. Last year, a five-set thriller. North St. Paul, the one seed this year, and they have the edge with the experience they brought back from a year ago. All of their big names return. Yaisa Franco, Bria Sandifer, Lauren Stedman, Jenna Rebelke are among them. And some newcomers, Danny Steckler and Mina Yenner, have done quite well in the varsity rotation. Stillwater, last year's team had a lot of seniors, including D1 Reese Kohler. She went to Seton Hall. But first, let's take a look at the bracket. North St. Paul swept Moundsview. Stillwater with the minor upset over Centennial on Monday. Stillwater dropped the first set and then pulled away in sets two through four. North St. Paul got through a couple of close sets with Moundsview before running away in the third set. And these two teams who have seen each other a lot will do so again. Not only is this the third straight year they've met in the section final, it's also the fourth time they've met in the last two years. They have done a regular season series with each other, Stillwater one in straight sets last year at North St. Paul. Back in August, it was the Polars who emerged victorious in four sets. So looking at the numbers and the research, everything suggests this could be North St. Paul's year, but history favors Stillwater. The Ponies, two-time defending section champions in 4-3-8. North St. Paul, they have never won a section title. I spoke with both teams. Naturally, they were excited to play each other once again to determine a state tournament slot. But North St. Paul, they feel a little something extra. In fact, here are the previous matchups, including North St. Paul's three sets to one win over Stillwater back in August. That snapped a four-game losing streak to the Ponies that dated back to Halloween of 2016. And as you can see before that, they hadn't met in about three years. So these two schools, no matter who is on the roster, they seem to have a way of running into each other. And that's produced a lot of great, close, intense matchups, especially in the last couple of years. Who could forget that section final? I was on hand for it. North St. Paul got a hot start out of the gate, took the first set. Stillwater battled back. North St. Paul forced it to a fifth, came a few points short. And I have to imagine for the returning veterans like Lauren Stenman, Yaisa Franco, Bria Sandifer, Jenna Belke, all of those players who have helped continue this program's run of excellence. Last year, they won the first 21 games of the season before losing a set. And there's Stephanie Blanda, head coach of North St. Paul. A basketball and volleyball standout at Tartan and St. Thomas. And Stillwater led by head coach Bob Fisher. As we know to players to keep an eye on, of course, with volleyball, there's always a few. There's Bob Fisher. He's always someone to keep an eye on. Stillwater had some lean years until recently where, as we said before, this volleyball team, not a lot of success. There is one of the players to watch, Lauren Stenman, going to Lewis University in Illinois next year. Approach jump of 9 feet 8 inches. She is the all-around specialist for the Polars. She can play any position. 
Does most of her damage in the front row, but played some setter last year due to injury. She is highly flexible, and no matter where she is on the floor, she will take it. And for Stillwater, Maddie Whittington, as we said, the big name going to Illinois. 10 foot two approach jump, six foot three inch frame. And she's got one heck of a swing, as you can see there in highlights we picked up on Monday when Stillwater knocked off Centennial. Maddie Whittington, what a great story, number seven. A couple years ago, missed her entire sophomore season when she tore her ACL, MCL, and meniscus. Was frightened about the prospect of never playing again. But here she is with a chance to go back to state one more time. North St. Paul will serve to start things off, and we're underway in the third round of this section final rivalry. There's Lauren Stenman with a kill through the middle. As we said, the all-around specialist, but Yiza Franco, she's not on the floor right now because of the rotation. She's someone to keep an eye on, brings a lot of height up front. Mina Yenner has done quite well this year. She wears number 15. There's Mina Yenner, but she hits that out of bounds. And that will be the first point of this set. For the Ponies, Stillwater, the scrappy bunch this time around. Last year, they were the favorite. Had a 14 and 12 regular season record. And a bit of a surprise when they knocked off Centennial. There's Lauren Stenman. And she'll get credit for that. North St. Paul continued their streak of conference victories. They have not lost a game in conference going back to the 2016 season. Four straight years of an unblemished Metro East conference record. Maddie Whittington scoring on the off-speed hit. Stillwater lost out on the Suburban East conference title this year. They won it a year ago going undefeated in conference play. This year it was Eastridge who won the conference title. They will battle Egan in the section final in a couple of days. And there's Danny Steckler who finds a spot in the back row and lands it for a point. Whoever gets out of here will likely be an underdog. I'm not sure if either team will be seated. Neither were in the top 10 in the final poll of the year. Stillwater started in the top 10, then fell out after some early season losses. Service error on Lauren Stenman. So it's more than likely whoever wins this section will go unseated. But in the words of Scott Van Pelt, the first step is getting a seat at the table. And Stillwater, they made it to the semifinal round last year before losing to Egan in four sets. And we've seen North St. Paul scrap together some wins. Uh, these two are definitely capable as Maddie Whittington will score off the block. But your favorites likely to come out of Section 3, whoever wins that with East Ridge and Egan, or Section 1 with Lakeville North and Northfield. The perennials in volleyball. Yiza Franco rejected. North St. Paul able to keep it in play. Sydney Dijarnet will score. DeJarnet had a solid performance in the semifinal round, 10 kills unofficially, and she is the energetic spark plug for the Ponies. If she can get some points, you will see it. You will know it. A highly animated athlete. Service error on the Ponies, number three, Olivia Foss. And here's Penelope Herr. The 5-2 defensive setter. North St. Paul doesn't have a lot of height. But they're used to it. They had a couple of 5-5 middles last year. That's a hitting error on Matty Olchin. And they have a 5-5 outside hitter this year. And Alexis Kang. It helps to have height in volleyball, but that's not the only way to contribute, and Maddie Whittington gets it inside the line, so the line shot goes in for a point. If you're wondering 
why we're here in Roseville, Washington Technology Magnet, the site that used to host a lot of section finals, opted to remove themselves from consideration for postseason events. Hence the location change. Yiza Franco gets the deflection and we'll get credit for the kill. As far as that goes, Stillwater would have the slight edge there. They had the 7-5 lead here in the first set because Stillwater has played here over the years, both Stillwater and Roseville, members of the Suburban East Conference, North St. Paul. They did play Roseville back in September, a game that North St. Paul won in five sets. And we may have a scoreboard issue. So an official's timeout. Okay, so the score was incorrect. It has now been corrected to 6-6. Six, six. And it's a good thing there's not a third team here because this is Halloween and you had a third six in there. Things could get real, real awkward. Yiza Franco serving. She is headed to LaSalle University in Pennsylvania. A D1 recruit. And Stillwater scores again. And that is Sydney Desjardins. As we said, if she can get on a run, the more flamboyant she becomes. North St. Paul answers right back with Bria Sandifer. Sandifer, we didn't see it in the open, but I can attest to this. She had four aces in the first set against Moundsview. Four aces in one set. Four in a game is usually a good mark. Four in a set, quite exceptional, and that's going to be a double contact violation, which will give North St. Paul the point and keep Bria Sandifer on serve. Bria's father helps run the grassroots AAU basketball organization. And why is that significant? I'll explain after this point. Here's Cindy Desjarnet, who scores again from the right side. She's picked up three points from there. So Grassroots Hoops AAU is the organization where Jalen Suggs and Chet Holmgren have developed their skills in the summer. You may recognize their names as basketball standouts at Minnehaha Academy. Both Jalen and Chet were present for North St. Paul's semifinal victory over Moundsview. It wouldn't surprise me if Suggs and Holmgren are here to cheer on Bria. Jenna Rebelke comes in a little late on that hit, and it goes right into the net. A tight one so far, 9-8 mirroring what we saw in the first meeting between these two teams back in August. And that will be another double contact call on Meredith Bruning. So errors hampering Stillwater a little bit, but we're still tied at nine. Neither side has made the first move. Confusion on the ponies. They weren't sure who was supposed to get the ball. You saw in that pass, a couple of folks stood there, paused momentarily, and that cost them. They couldn't recover in time. Communication, calling out the ball is so important. That will be a hitting error on Meredith Bruning. And North St. Paul up by two. Unforced errors on the part of the ponies not helping the cause right now. Lauren Reneker on the attack. Now Danny Steckler will try it. Off speed hit, Stillwater reads it. Reneker hits that one too hard. Bob Fisher will hang on to his timeouts for now. As you know, you get two per set. be a point for North St. Paul. I'm not sure Matty Olgin's hit went past the net. 
And North St. Paul, they've scored four in a row due to hitting errors. Among other things, so Bob Fisher will use one of his two timeouts in the first set. Here's a look at the last play, and it's tough to tell at real-time speed, but from my vantage point, I don't think Mandy Olchen was able to get it across the net, and timing is so important when you go up for the swing. You go a little too early, you can send it out of bounds. A fraction too late, and it goes into the net. Precision is such a big part of being a strong attacker in the sport of volleyball. This North St. Paul team, well, at the start of the season, Stephanie Blenda jokingly told me that her players may not have had total appreciation for the classics when it comes to pop culture and music and the like, but they do know their history. That is a service error on Alexis King to end the North St. Paul run. I cover the North St. Paul Simley game, and Simley known for playing old school tunes, including the Macarena, which the North St. Paul team proceeded to engage in, as in the entire team danced to the Macarena, which impressed me because that came out long before any of these athletes were born. Lauren Stedman winds up and scores another point. Jenna Rebelke, the libero, will now serve. She picked up a couple of aces in the semifinal win over Moundsview, including one to end it. Woodington, not sure if that was the contact she wanted to make. Franco with the lob. Or St. Paul, doing real well on the block. Lauren Stenman goes cross court and scores another point. Stenman had 16 kills unofficially against Moundsview. She had an ace, had a couple of blocks. The Mustangs had no answer for her. Whittington gets the line shot to land in bounds. She'll be joining one of the toughest conferences in college volleyball. So for Maddie, she'll fit right in. Steckler, almost got it. Stillwater able to save it. But the Polars with a good attacking chance here. Franco couldn't get past the block. Whittington gets it over the block just barely, but barely is good enough. Although the Ponies still trail 15 to 12. Franco, just out of bounds. Went for the cross court cut and just missed it. We don't have review at this level. So we can't show you how close it was, but we can show you the velocity that Lauren Stenman packs. You may not think she's capable at her 5'10 frame, but Stenman deceptively strong with that arm. Went for the low serve, and it sails out of bounds. 16-14, North St. Paul had a 4-0 rally. Stillwater inching their way back. Again, no mirroring what we saw when these two teams met all the way back in August at Stillwater. Franco, lead hit. And the Boulders will get a free ball out of this. And Danny Steckler will make the most of it. Steckler. Mini Yen are two of the sophomores that Stephanie Blanda spoke highly of at the start of the season. 
Mini Yenner missed some time due to a concussion. But she'll likely take over for Yiza Franco up front as far as blocking power. And there is Yiza Franco. Gets the deflection and the point. Yiza Franco, if you followed our coverage before. Her mother, a teacher at Tartan High School. North St. Paul's biggest rival. Free ball for the Bullers. Stenman from the back row. Picked up by Ellie Springer. Setter dump by the Ponies. Is picked up by the Polars. They read it, but Yiza Franco misfires. Although the Polars are more or less trading points with the Ponies, and that's fine with them because they maintain their lead. Here's Lucy Zoller. One of the building blocks of the future for the Ponies, just a sophomore, and there's Alexis Kang. Older sister Angel Kang, a member of this team last year. And another player who embodies the grit and determination of this program. She also graduated, Selena Rodriguez. She had a memorable performance in the section final a year ago. Dejarnit. Going cross court again. Sandifer says, my bad. She uh, didn't think she had a great up on it. Twenty to fifteen is our score. That's not right. Nineteen sixteen. Maybe the scoreboard is haunted. It is Halloween after all. Tori Liljegren, the freshman, serves that out of bounds. Now it's 2016. Here's Bria Sandifer. No aces yet, or I should say one ace. She's always a threat for more, and Lauren Stenman a threat on the floor no matter where she is. Timeout, North St. Paul, I should say Stillwater. Now I'm getting mixed up. 21-16, Polars lead the Ponies, and Stillwater out of timeouts for the remainder of the first set. Winner will go to the Axe. They will play at 9 or 11, depending on how the brackets play out on Thursday. In a couple of years, well, let's take a look at some of the costumes. I see some witches, I see a sheriff. What else do we have here? It is Halloween, I see a penguin. I see Nacho Libre. <laughs> All right, he's flexing, he's ready. And if you'd like to volunteer, whether as a semi-professional wrestler or as a camera operator, give us a call at 651-747-3821 or send us an email at arlen at scctv.org. That is arlen at scctv.org. Not to be confused with Carlin. Okay, I'm having too much fun up here. Let's get back to action before I go crazy. Sandifer serving, 21-16 lead for the Polars in the first set. Stemmen again. This time Springer with the up. Overpass is tapped down by Meredith Bruning. Bruning, one of the seniors who moved up on the depth chart. Last year's team, as we said, senior heavy. You had the D1 recruiter, Reese Kohler. She's now playing at Seton Hall. And Brooke Ashenbrenner, Olivia Walsh, Britta Borman. Manny Whittington, the only returning starter from that group a year ago that got Stillwater. Their farthest position ever. Lauren Stenman rises up, but she is rejected this time by Bruning. And Stillwater looking for a lifeline. Meredith Bruning may be giving it to them. 
Gabrielle Bogle serving for the Ponies. Let's serve. Bria Sandifer, left side, right side. She's got all sides covered. Two eighteen is the score here. Boulders three away from taking the first set. Which would mirror what they did a year ago when they took the first set from Stillwater. And now Bob Fisher is having a conversation with the down judge. And we get that matter settled and continue. Just in time for Alexis Kang to get an ace. Well, there's two away. Kang serves that out of bounds. Stillwater have a run in them. Well, they'll need to find it quick because the service error on Matty Olchin gives North St. Paul a set point. They'll have five to work with. Jenna Rebelke to serve it. Whittington. Vicious hit, but North St. Paul able to dig it. She'll try again from the left side, and it goes into the net. North St. Paul takes the first set, just like they did in August, and just like they did at this very same game a year ago. So it's the Polars who draw one step closer to a state tournament appearance. And Stillwater, they've got some work to do. We'll come back in a moment. You're watching the Section 4 3A Volleyball Final. Chiru has no choice. She and millions like her must walk miles every day for dirty water. But together, we can end their walk by providing clean water close by. Instead of spending hours walking to get water that makes them sick, girls can be in a classroom that expands their minds, and moms will gain back time to care for their families. Sons and daughters can grow up strong, finally free of sicknesses caused by dirty water. At World Vision, care about clean water runs deep. Deep enough to reach one new person with clean water every 10 seconds. Because every child, every person, everywhere deserves clean water and a chance to rise to their full potential. It's true, when you just add water, you change a life. Learn more at worldvision.org. Taking the opening frame over Stillwater. In the Section 4 3A Volleyball Championship. Mike Beaton all by myself talking to myself. Winner gets a trip to the Excel Energy Center next week starting Thursday. North St. Paul looking to make their first ever appearance in the state championship. Stillwater hoping to make it three in a row. And taking a look at the Metro East standings, they're a little weird if you're wondering about the conference records. Uh, several schools owing to the classic suburban days have traveling trophy games. So South St. Paul, Simley, Henry Sibley among them. And as a result, they play more conference games than schools like North St. Paul would. And that's why Simley is listed first. They had more wins, but it owes to playing more games. North St. Paul officially winning the conference title for the fourth straight year. Suburban East, it's a little easier. Everyone plays each other once. Stillwater finishing third this year, but you notice that overall record, that's where they struggled, going 7-10 and 10 in non-conference play. Eastridge winning the conference title over Woodbury and Creighton Durham Hall. And as we noted earlier, Eastridge playing Egan in a couple of days for the Section 3 title. There's Lauren Stenman. 
Sending a heart to somebody in the North St. Paul student section, I imagine. Lauren Stenman, big factor, leads the team in kills. Data limited as far as that goes for the two schools, but as we said earlier, she is the all-around approach jump of 9 feet 8 inches, block jump 8 feet 6 inches. She stands 5'10", but plays a lot bigger than that. We will start the second set of this best North St. Paul, as we said, winning their first 21 games of the year last season. Didn't have quite that start this time. They opened their season at the Sidon Classic, lost to St. Michael Albertville. And the, there was a long team meeting after that to figure out what happened and to work out any emotional bumps. In a violation of some kind, North St. Paul will get the point there. They lost to Woodbury at the Wally Wakefield invite, which is North St. Paul's home tournament. Lost in three sets to St. Michael Albertville again at the Blaine Invitational, and lost in three sets to St. Louis Park. As you know, invitationals are played with a condensed three-set format, and we may have had a rotation violation. The score has not been updated yet, and the down judge and up judge are having a conversation with each other. North St. Paul ended the season with three straight wins, knocking off Henry Sibley, Simley, and Hastings to go undefeated in Metro East Conference play for the fourth straight year. And some games are going to be easier than others, others when it comes to conference play, but to put together a streak that long, that's impressive. And it says a lot about what Steve Anderson did and what Stephanie Blanda has done since she took over as head coach. Now the up ref having a conversation with Matty Olgin. Overall, though, no bad losses for North St. Paul. All the teams they lost to were high-level contenders. St. Louis Park, they will battle Bloomington Jefferson for the Section 6 title. Woodbury, a team that came out of nowhere. As you saw on the graphic, they were second in the Suburban East this year. Won their first 14 games of the season. And this could be the start of a long run of success for the Royals. So after all of that, North St. Paul does get credit for the point, and we will resume play. Matty <laughs> Olchin gets that one out of bounds. I spoke with one of the Stillwater parents before the game, and he said you can't let North St. Paul get an early run. And they've got to make sure you they limit the unforced errors, don't give away free points. Stillwater had a few too many of those in the first set. Matty Olchin will score off the block. As the up went out of bounds. If they can clean that up in later sets, who knows? But they are the underdog in what was a rebuilding year of sorts. 
Danny Steckler's hitting attempt goes out of bounds. We're tied at too early. Steckler off speed. And Meredith Bruning wasn't ready for it. Patty Whittington, her patented laser strike. We're tied at three early. Franco attacks, Springer with the up. But the Bulldogs will get a free ball. And Franco will capitalize on it this time. Yiza, as we said, headed to LaSalle, located in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. The alma mater of Cheryl Reeve, the four-time WNBA champion and as head coach of the Minnesota Lynx. Stillwater going with a fake, and it looked, out, looked like they were going to set up Whittington. It was Lauren Rineker who ends up scoring off the block. Olivia Foss. Serve. Lauren Stenden from the back row hits that one into the net. And the student sections for both sides, they don't need any seats. Franco, back to back hitting errors. As Stenden and Franco both come up into the net. Usually when that happens, it means you're a little bit late on the approach. And Stillwater on a rally here in the second set. They've scored three in a row, following an ace from Olivia Foss. In North St. Paul, they won't lose a timeout yet, but it will lead to a rotation. Abby Shell will make her first appearance. 5-3, defensive specialist. She's a senior. She wears number two. Jenna Rebelke, the libero, gets the kill. Stillwater thought it was going out momentarily. Rebelke able to paint the corner. No matter the team, liberos do not score a ton of kills. And now we've got the score reading 9-5. It's 7-5. We've had a few issues tonight keeping track of the score. And that will count as an ace for Penelope Herr. And that makes it 7-6. So a couple of aces from players you wouldn't expect. Maddie Whittington blocked. Stillwater, can they save it? No, they can't. The 5-6 Bria Sandifer jumps up, wins the net ball. Bria, very calm, mild-mannered figure. Not a woman of many words, but showing a little enthusiasm there. And if I were a setter, I guess I would do the same. Because much like libero, setters don't often get kills. Yaisa Franco, though, can score. I asked her what her mother wears when North St. Paul and Tartan play each other. That's a let service ace for Penelope Herr. And the Polders have scored five in a row. And if you're wondering, Franco told me over the years when North St. Paul and Tartan would meet, her mother would wear purple. Stillwater. 
trying to get red hot here. Dejarnit, off speed law. Franco with the up. Back row attack by Stenman will drop for a point. A 6 0 run by the Pollers. And that's enough for Bob Fisher to use the first of his two timeouts in set number two. North St. Paul. They've had a couple of bumps, a couple of mishaps, but they are focused and they've been locked in for most of this one. If you're watching this, well, if you're watching this on YouTube, we'll get to that in a moment. Here's a look at the last point scored by the Pullers. And as we said, Lawrence Stenman, one of the most versatile figures. She was an all-state honorable mention last year in Class 3A, and I have to imagine when the awards come out in the next week or so, the state tournament being next week, Got a feeling Lauren Stemmen will add another all-conference designation to her honor and maybe an all-state commendation as well. Another unforced error on the ponies. This has been their undoing so far. As we were going to say, if you're watching this on YouTube, we'll have one more game on SEC's fall coverage slate, and that is tomorrow with Tartan and Matamidi. Another case of deja vu as they meet once again in the Section 4-5A final. Tartan won it last year. We're going to make it two in a row this year. Maddie Whittington had to backpedal at the last minute. That allowed Yiza Franco to slap it down for the block. Maddie Whittington was ready to attack, and the pass to her, she misjudged had to backpedal at the very last moment. Couldn't get the velocity she wanted. And the Pullers, after they trail by three, they are up by five. They have scored eight in a row. Make it nine in a row. Alexis King going cross court. Props to the 5-5 five, five middle hitter. Doesn't score as frequently as Franco or Stenman. In for Stillwater, number 21, Sid Schaefer. Yeah. Yeah. A service error on Penelope here, but that's okay. The Pullers scoring nine in a row with her on Louis service. And I see Chet Holmgren in the stands. And I have to imagine Jalen Suggs isn't far away. Net ball, won by the Pullers. Yiza Franco hit it where nobody could be found. That back corner off in a great place if everyone packs themselves up front. Yiza Franco rotates back to the service position. Bullers have scored 10 of the last 11 points. And now will be 11 of the last 12 as Matty Olchin hit the antenna. And that will be enough for Stillwater to use their second and final timeout of the second set. If North St. Paul does advance to the state tournament, all the games will be streamed live on PrepSpotlight.tv for Polar's fans interested in following along. And as we said, one more fall game, but we won't be gone long. We'll have plenty of hockey and basketball coverage coming your way on SCC Sports. And if you'd like to follow us on social media, no matter what platform you use, we're on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube. SCC TV for Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube, and SCC TV Sports for those on the Twitter sphere. A lot of ways to stay up to date on your favorite teams right here in the Northeast Metro.
Stillwater was up 7-4. to four. An 11-1 run since then for the Polars. Who have inched closer and closer over the last couple of years, as you saw in the opening graphic as Isaac yeah, Franco serves that out of bounds. When North St. Paul and Stillwater met in the section championship in 2017, Stillwater won in four sets. Last year, North St. Paul lost in five sets. Made Stillwater sweat for it, though. Nina Yenner with her first point. Nina Yenner will be one of the future centerpieces for North St. Paul when the big three graduate. I call them the big three, Yiza, Franco, Bria Sandifer, Lawrence Stemmen. Cindy DeJarnett will score off the hit as it was dug out of bounds. Sydney DeJarnett, she and Lauren Rineker had Notable performances in the semifinal. It was the first year as a starter for both on varsity, and both will be back next year. Both DeJarnett and Rineker Jr. So, as we said, for Stillwater, a little bit of a rebuilding year as Gabrielle Bogle serves that out of bounds. But what you will have are several players who will get a year of experience. Seventeen ten. Ponies out of timeouts here in the second set. Shell able to get the up just before the ball made contact with the court. And another up for Shell. Danny Steckler on the attack. Now Rineker will try from the left side. Belke got the up, but not in a position where her teammates could help. So Lauren Rineker will get credit for the score. Sandifer to Stenman. What a combination. If you followed our coverage last year, we did a feature on the Sports Pass show where Bria Sandifer had to deal with some health complications. Whittington knows a thing or two about that, coming back from adversity. And that is not easy to get a dig on one of her laser strikes. Lauren Rineker eventually scores for the Ponies. Lauren Rineker, the junior. And Maddie Winnington, who was once worried about being able to play volleyball again at the level she was able to before the injury. Started her rehab the day after surgery. And made a huge difference I would say she was a big reason why the Ponies were able to defend their section title. Woodington can't catch up to it in time, though. It was a big deal when the Ponies won the section title without her in 2017. They had Kayla Jurdy and Reese Kohler, who had solid performances. Last year was the Maddie Whittington show. She was an All-State recipient in Class 3A. I imagine we'll get a similar honor here. And on cue, she taps down the overpass, but she may have crossed the center line. Because North St. Paul gets the point. Manny Winnington perplexed. If you're new to volleyball, you cannot cross the center line in any capacity over it or under the net. Lawrence Stenman with the service error. It may not be a consequential point considering North St. Paul's seven point lead, but that can still be a momentum swing. 
Because that was an emphatic hit on the part of Maddie Whittington. And if she gets in that wind-up position, look out. And that's it. Jenna Rebelke picks up another kill. And the Ponies can't do anything to stop this surge of momentum on the part of North St. Paul because they don't have any timeouts left. Kang gets it to drop. Alexis can't slam it like Stemmen and Franco can at five foot five. You just don't have the vertical to do it. But as you saw on that play, what she can do, use the off speed hit, find a spot where Stillwater doesn't have a player in the vicinity of. And the Polars, looks like they're going to run away here with this second set. Sidney DiGiorno will score off the block. Maddie Whittington told me that DiGiorno is the most animated athlete on the Stillwater roster. Called her the queen of emotion and positive emotion. So you're not going to see her getting any outbursts, anything like that. But the queen of energy, electricity. Liza Franco gets that to fall inside the line. And the boulder's two away from taking set two. Both teams wanted another shot at each other. North St. Paul to get over that hump one and for all. That will be a service ace for Yaisa Franco. Bria Sandifer and Lauren Stenman told me about the frustration of the roadblock that was Stillwater for the last three years. They met in the section semifinal back in 2016. Stillwater won that one. And that was just out of bounds, but North St. Paul still has nine set points to work with. No danger here for the Polars, who have yet to call a timeout in this game. And Mini Yenner will do it, scoring off the block. And North St. Paul, the Polars are on the prowl and are one set away from making their first ever appearance in state or in school history. But some folks will say the third set is the hardest one to win. We'll find out how hard it is and if Stillwater has a rally in them when we return. Do you know what constitutes our Constitution? This living document that's a fusion of our forefathers' vision for the future of this nation? We have a Bill of Rights. We're not billed for these rights, but we've been given these rights because we live. We don't have to pay every day when we don't watch what we say. A penny for our thoughts is not what we give, but we give off our thoughts by the way that we live. And there are soldiers who've died, men and women who've paid the price, in the blink of an eye given their lives to make our lives nice. And we can't fight to preserve these rights, to reach new heights, get through the darkest nights together if we don't know. We the people, we the future, can't make it right if we don't show an interest in learning the script that governs our lives. So forgive me if I'm wrong, but if you belong to this country, then there are rights that belong to you so long as you do one thing. You know your constitution and your freedom that it brings. You can't fight for what's right. You can't find a flaw if you've never shed light on the supreme law of the land. The land of the free and the home of the brave requires your knowledge and God's good grace in order to save our human race in the face of terror. And I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but you need to choose what you're going to do because you could lose everything. While we were away, it was officially announced that Stephanie Blanda is the Section 4-3A Coach of the Year. The award is sponsored by the Minnesota Volleyball Coaches Association. 
And not a surprise when you look at the season North St. Paul put together and the body of work they put together over the last several years. Stephanie Blanda. Called a few games with her on Valley Access channels. And in the last year or so, let's just say she's still getting used to my sense of humor. But found it amusing when I clipped highlights of the North St. Paul Wendover Mounds view and put up all four aces you would find in a deck of playing cards to represent the four aces that Bria Sandifer collected in the first set of the Wendover Mounds view. So I should make it clear, Stephanie Blanda does have a great sense of humor, but uh, she and I have had a few adventures, especially when we call games together. Some other faces in the crowd include a couple of Roseville athletes, Sophia Kopp and Jada Johnston. Jada did not play volleyball this year, choosing to focus on basketball, where she is headed to Valparaiso, but both sang the national anthem before the game began. And as we noted earlier, Chet Holmgren is here from Minnehaha Academy. Hitting error on the ponies. Holmgren and Jalen Suggs. Grew up with the grassroots AAU organization where Bria Sandifer's father is involved in. Good serve by Alexis King. And the Polars off to a roaring start. I'm sure that's not the first time they've heard that line. Sandifer to Stenman. Stillwater reads it. And Olchin will score. Maddie Olchin had an ankle injury that sidelined her for much of the 2018 season. Was able to return at the end of the year and take part in the postseason. The younger of the Yulgin sisters, Lexi Yulgin, one of those super seniors on last year's Stillwater team. Danny Steckler, line him up. As we said, one of the building blocks of the future for the bowlers, Steckler and Yenner. North St. Paul, they're going to lose a lot of talent to graduation, including the big three. So to see Steckler and Yenner get some plays in will be encouraging come this time in 2020. And what will be the final year of three-class volleyball? Liza Franco always has class. Franco takes her volleyball commitment seriously, her academic studies seriously. She's been an honor roll student ever since eighth grade. That kid has a bright future. Franco, I believe, got the deflection, and she did. Another point for Franco, another point for North St. Paul, and it doesn't look like they can be stopped. For what it's worth, they had beaten Centennial on the road in regular season play as Franco scores again. Who knows what would have happened if those two met, but right now in this matchup, North St. Paul has the edge when it comes to personnel. Stillwater calls timeout. The Paulers up six to one in the third set, and if they can take this one, it'll be a done deal. The Polders looking to make their first trip ever to the state tournament. And as we said, next year will be the final year of three-class volleyball. Earlier in the fall, the high school league, as you take another look at the bracket and how they got here. Something you can't see on the graphic, but will likely go away with the expansion to four classes is the first round are playing games, if you will. Most of the sections in 3A have 12 teams, 10, 12 teams. So, you know, the top four seeds get first round buys. 
And all four advanced into the semis, as you saw in the graphic, but they have to wait for in section four, for example, teams nine through 12 to get through their play-in rounds. That will likely go away because the high school league approved the expansion to four classes. So you will likely see a breakdown similar to basketball as Jenner Rebelke serves that into the net, which likely wouldn't affect North St. Paul or Stillwater based on enrollment. They would still be in 4A, but the section will be a little bit smaller and it will level out the playing field because uh, Sinley, for example, in section 3-3A, you've got some schools that are much smaller than your big schools. Hitting air on Yiza Franco. Stillwater, for example, has 3,500 students in their enrollment. Service ace for Ellie Springer. And you've got some schools who are on the much lower end of that cutoff. And enrollment is not the only factor that can determine a team's competitiveness, but coach has told me it was a discrepancy that was difficult to overcome. And so a lot of them are excited to have a fourth class just to level things out and get teams on more equal ground. Lauren Stenman scored and then serves that out of bounds. Ponies trim the margin to two. One side effect with the expansion of four classes is how the high school league would accommodate that in their state tournament. It's already a busy weekend with three classes and two courts at XL Energy Center. The guess is, as Franco cannot score there, the guess is that Danny Steckler will get the kill. The guess is that consolation rounds will be played at another venue, much like basketball and hockey. So something the high school league will have to sort out. But again, it should level the playing field. North St. Paul with a couple of big saves to keep the rally alive. Stenman's time yeah. turn to get a dig. Now Sandifer, North St. Paul's defense. North St. Paul's defense is rewarded. It looked like Stillwater made contact with the net. Oh, no. Wolchin got the up. Alexis King will get credit for it. Olgen got the up. You probably didn't see it on our cameras, but the ball went into the ceiling, and with gyms that have a lower clearance, as Bria Sandifer taps down the overpass for a kill. You know it's North St. Paul's night when you're light hitters, and I say that with an asterisk, but Rebelki and Sandifer have picked up their share of kills tonight. But Jins with the lower clearance. North St. Paul has this issue, Stillwater as well. The ball can go into the ceiling and can take some weird ricochets. Yiza Franco scores, and the Polar is up by seven. Well on their way to the first ever section title. I noticed this when I covered the semifinals on Monday. North St. Paul at their gym put up banners of all their sports and all the years they have won conference section or state titles or made notable runs. Volleyball, they've got plenty of conference titles, but you look at section titles, it's a big, giant blank. If they can hang on and take this third set, they can engrave the numbers 2-0-1-9.
North St. Paul picks up another point. Speaking of low clearances, Stillwater had a situation where a ball that was dug by Sydney DeJarnet led to a delay. And speaking of DeJarnet, there she is. So DeJarnet, in a game Stillwater played against White Bear Lake at the Staples, Stillwater's home gym, DeJarnet got an up. It caromed into one of the heating vents. Mina Yenner with the tear drop. And that drops another point into North St. Paul's call. So it went into one of the vents and knocked it off. It was still tethered, but not by much. And as a result, they had to relocate to the Ponies Activity Center, which opened just a couple of years ago, part of a major expansion for Stillwater's athletic program, and they had to complete the game at the Ponies Activity Center. Lawrence Stenman with a kill down the middle. It was an amusing footnote. Stillwater won that game in straight sets. Timeout, Stillwater. Winning in straight sets over White Bear Lake. And everyone had some fun with Sidney DeJarnett's dig that went into the vents. So gyms with lower clearances like Roseville, North St. Paul, Stillwater, that's something they have to contend with. Not an issue at the Axel Energy Center or in places that have a lot of ceiling space. Let's take another look at that last point by Mina Yenner. I should say Lauren Stenman. Mina Yenner got the point before then. And we saw this out of Lauren Stenman in the semifinals. Hitting is her strongest suit, but she can beat you in all sorts of ways. And the big three of Stenman, Franco, and Sandifer, they love being a part of an elevation, putting a spotlight on women's sports at North St. Paul when there isn't a whole lot to talk about in terms of success, in terms of titles and postseason runs. North St. Paul, they've been on the precipice for the last couple of years. Stopped in their tracks by Stillwater. Nina Yenner thought that was in. The referees say no. But North St. Paul with a big lead here. Stillwater out of timeouts. And the North St. Paul fan section eagerly awaiting to cheer on their brethren. They wait in anticipation of a moment they have never earned before. And I believe Olchen crossed the net there again. Would have had a point. Instead, it goes to North St. Paul's column. Stillwater had a good couple of years getting themselves back into the conversation. But everyone knew this was going to be a year of challenge. And the Ponies, some would say, outperformed their expectations. A 14 and 12 regular season record. They were still able to get the three seed. Oh, Maddie Olchen could have tapped down an overpass. She does score. I thought her hit was too soft, but North St. Paul unable to recover in time. Stillwater playing a tough schedule as well. They started the season against Minnetonka in the side out classic, continued their series with Egan. Moorhead, a top 10 team most of the year. Bowlers get the save, but a free ball for the Ponies. And Rittaker will cash in with a liner. Stillwater swept by East Ridge. Swept by Woodbury, lost to Lakeville South, one of the perennials in section one. And 
Bruning throwing down the block. Split a pair of games with Elk River. And we've seen this all season long with the Ponies as Lawrence Stenman is firing at all cylinders. They played well. They would get a good set or two against some of the higher level opponents, but they had trouble finishing compared to a year ago. But again, they're going to have some athletes coming back with a year of experience they didn't have. Yiza Franco throws down the overpass and adds another point in the North St. Paul's column. North St. Paul fans can sense history. You never forget the first time you achieve the milestone, and if the Polars can hang on and close out the third set, no matter what happens to them in the state tournament, they'll always be known as the group that got to the state tournament first. Maddie Winnington hits that out of bounds. And if this does end up being Maddie Winnington's final game of her high school career, what a comeback, what a story, and what a future she's going to have. As we said, the Big Ten, one of the toughest conferences in college volleyball. Lauren Rineker scoring off the block. Illinois, they fielded some strong teams. Minnesota, always in the conversation. Penn State, Nebraska. Wisconsin having a phenomenal season. So for Maddie Winnington, as Lauren Stenman scores. Nothing out of the ordinary for her. She's used to playing in tough conferences with the Suburban East, home to Eastridge. And Lauren Stenman will be subbed out. As the Polars have a nine point lead, they are putting in number eight. Get her name in a moment. Uh, it's again another ball that caroms off the backboard. Nikki Emting, number eight, the 5 2 defensive specialist. Stephanie Blando trying to give some of her marquee players a send off here. And with the Polars leading by eight, you have some breathing room. Of course, this isn't like basketball where you can. Wait until there's a few minutes left and then put in your deep players, but North St. Paul has no reason to fear. On Halloween night, they're gonna get plenty of treats and no tricks. And one of those treats, a full-size candy bar that holds a ticket to the Class 3A state tournament. A goal the Polar's team has battled for years to get into. They were stoked to get another shot at Stillwater. And rewrite the narrative that had been in Stillwater's favor for the last two years. Lauren Stenman. I would say my choice for MVP of the section tournament based on what I've seen in the semifinals and the section final. Maddie Whittington rotates out. All smiles for now, but I have to imagine it's going to be emotional when her high school career comes to an end. Cindy DeJarnett serves that into the net or hits that into the net. And as we said, whatever happens, she will have a bright future in Illinois. And an amazing story of perseverance. Whittington following her mother's footsteps. Her mother, a college volleyball standout at Illinois. And Cindy DeJarnett will be one of the centerpieces, one of the players to watch next year for the Ponies. As folks like DeJarnett and Rineker will anchor this team, 
as they continue their search for a new identity. Lawrence Stenman. Another rocket. And the coronation is almost here. Having a tough time seeing with all the North St. Paul fans standing up. Lawrence Stedman sends North St. Paul to state. A long time coming. And the Polars, for the first time ever, are section champions. Those moments of heartbreak against Stillwater over the last two years have finally gone away. It will be a gold medal that North St. Paul wears on their necks this time around. And we mentioned some of the players that will keep this team moving forward in future seasons. Ariel Carr will be one of them. She transferred from Roseville, had to sit out this year. This is a group undersized by volleyball standards. They don't have the plethora of six feet plus front row hitters like Eastridge and Egan and Lakeville North, Northfield, some of those top tier contenders that make it year in and year out. But you had determination, grittiness, and a mission to put a stamp on North St. Paul to give them a platform for women's sports as we take a look at some highlights. North St. Paul, as you can see on the line score, had to eke out a first set win, but in sets two and three, there was no doubt that they were here to close out, and they did. Lauren Stenman, only fitting that she scored the final point that North St. Paul needed. to earn their way to the state tournament. So the award presentation will take place, but we want to congratulate Stillwater for making it to the section final the third straight year. And North St. Paul, the wait is over. The category, the section of section titles is no longer blank. The Polars will move on to state. They will play next Thursday at Excel Energy Center. PrepSpotlight.tv will have that match live if you want to follow along. But once again, congratulations to North St. Paul for winning their first ever section championship in high school volleyball. That will do it from Roseville Area High School. For our entire crew on SCC, I'm Mike Peden. Thank you for watching.